Well, here we go again. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. There's some risky clips lined up today. Pretty outrageous TikToks, but there's gonna be some learning moments too. So please do join in and let me know what you think in the comments. Let's dive in. Okay, everybody, we're back at it with another one. We caught ourselves two, not one, but two red diamondback rattlesnakes, everyone. Two rubers. We got ourselves a male with the female. On the one hand, this guy, he's not doing anything bad to the snakes. He's not harming them. He's not being cruel. I wouldn't attack him in that sense. But on the other hand, why is he doing it? What's the point? Is this only shock content? Is it helping the snakes? Is it helping normalize unhealthy behaviors around them? I don't know. What do you think? These snakes, it's a part of the Bible. And I'm going to put that before anybody. I've been bit. Six times. I don't think it's crazy, it's just a sign from God. Snake handling, it is not for me. I don't understand it. The purpose of our church is to spread the name of Jesus Christ and get people safe. But if you've not been raised up in it and you look at it, you're gonna be like, man, them people's crazy. There you saw one of the preachers from the famous snake handling churches. This isn't a topic I knew too much about before starting these videos. And again, there's a couple of different sides to this story. On the one hand, I probably have a soft spot for people from Appalachia because I knew quite a few growing up. I had friends whose relatives were from Kentucky and areas like that. And also, I'm not going to criticise people for their religious beliefs because I just don't like that, to be honest. But on the other hand, it's incredibly dangerous. People keep dying from it and having serious envenomations. Clearly, if it is a test, some of the people are failing the test. Again, I'm not trying to be offensive saying that, but there really are risks with this stuff. Look at that right there, massive Gaboon Viper fangs. Can you see how large those fangs are right there? Insane, almost two inches long. Wow. Nah, no thanks. To get me to do that, you'd really have to be paying me a lot, or I'd have to know that that venom was gonna be used for anti-venom for saving people's lives to make it worthwhile. That thing is just risky all round. The Mojave rattlesnake gets a bad reputation, but just like all the other rattlesnakes, they are a defensive animal not aggressive. My finger is inches away from the snake's face, and the snake is scared, hence the rattling. But instinct kicks in. He's thirsty. This is like if a big bear found us almost dehydrated and offered us a glass of water. To be honest, I had no idea what was happening in that clip when it started, but then she starts talking sense, so it turned out pretty good. She's just giving the snake a drink, basically. And it's true, they are defensive, they're not aggressive. The stories we're told, particularly about Mojave rattlesnakes and Western Diamondbacks, is that they'll chase you down the street, try and kill you at every turn, and they're just these these maniac animals. It's just not true, really. They're, they're survivors, basically, more than anything else. This pump saves you from a snake bite. As the extractor pump acts as a vacuum, placing the suction cup on a bite and pressing the plunger all the way will quickly and effectively remove poison from snake bites, as well as wasp and bee stings, making it a must-have for hiking. The only reason I'm not saying that they should ban that device is because banning stuff goes against my beliefs of self-determination, so I really don't like the idea of banning stuff, but if I was going to ban anything, it would be that. Those are crap. They're a waste of time. They waste your time when you could be going and getting help. Whenever you get bitten by something very, very venomous, your first thought should be, let's cut the crap and get straight to help. <laughs> Me and Mother Nature are going to fight for this one. I am not okay with that. Meet the flying snake. Outside of my nightmares, these things are only found in Asia. And yes, they are venomous. Mildly venomous, but still. Venom shouldn't be above my head. Now they don't technically fly, more or less glide, but they can glide up to 300 feet. You know how long 300 feet is? That, that's flying to me. And basically how they do it is they'll climb up to the highest point they can find, usually a tree. And then they'll concave their stomach in and flatten their body out. And they just whip themselves out of the tree and fly with the wind at 25 miles an hour. 
they could fly 25 miles an hour. I can't believe I'm talking about the flying speed of a snake. Oh, and just for the cherry on top, it's also believed that they can hunt birds and bats in mid-flight. I think you did a pretty nice job with that one, but I'm definitely going to dispute the idea that they hunt birds and bats in mid-flight. I don't believe it. It doesn't fit the behavior. The gliding behavior is to get to another place. It's dispersal technique or it's to get to safety. But anyway, flying snakes are fascinating and I was really glad I could technically include them in this video as they are venomous. What is also incredibly interesting about them is that their distribution is strongly correlated with that of dipterocarp forests. Dipterocarp trees are these massive tall trees like the ironwood tree I think is one in um, Malaysia and they jut above the canopy at different levels and in the same areas you have foothills and varied geography and all these different levels creates the perfect ground for the evolution of gliding animals. So you've got the gliding snakes, the gliding frogs, the kalugos, etc. Another Russell's Viper bite video with someone showing off. You can tell by the people in the background that the guy's showing off. And I see these like every week now coming out of the Indian subcontinent mainly. And I just don't get it. I mean, it's really not worth the risk. They're so agile. They're so tactical and smart in their movements. I just think if there's any snake you don't want to mess with, this is, this is really high up on the list. This is a very good question. Have you ever looked at these holes in the side of a snake's face and wonder what's their purpose? These holes are heat seeking organs that give the snake the ability to detect and see an infrared radiation. But not all snakes have them and not all of these heat organs are made the same, but that can be for another video. So what are they? These are called heat pits, specialized organs to help the snake detect heat, to catch prey, avoid predators, and just create an image of their world. The pit opening acts as a pinhole camera, a virtual lens that allows the receptors to track the movements of any infrared source for the brain to form an image. Basically, these holes are full of sensitive receptors that feed information to the brain, which is overlaid with their visual surroundings, which then of course is collected by their eyes. That was all great information. I wish I'd been able to present information as nicely when I was her age. And the thermoreceptive pits in pythons, boas, rattlesnakes, and other pit vipers are absolutely fascinating. Something I'm guilty of though, and what she alluded to there, is that often I group them all together and I just talk about thermoreceptive pits. But actually the thermoreceptive pits of pit vipers are much superior than those of pythons and boas, for example. They are in a deeper cavity and they've got a very, very, very thin membrane suspended between an inner and outer chamber, so they're thermally isolated with an air pocket and this makes them much, much more sensitive. <laughs> I love that the guy chucks around the cobra, mistreats it, basically handles it in a completely disrespectful way, showing off once again. And then it bites him and he looks at his hand like he's surprised. Well, this, this animal I've just treated like crap just bit me. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you want to keep these guys happy, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and possibly even join. And if you would like some merchandise, please go to zoologywithwill.com. All the profits will go to future projects on the channel. I was warned that this snake was a handful. This right here is a death adder. I've never worked with one of these. This isn't a lapid that's shaped like a viper. These guys are one of the quickest striking venomous snakes in the world, if they're not the quickest striking. These guys are really, really quick. This is a little female. We are going to try to get her out and get her into the enclosure with the snake hook. I was told just to use a shovel. Just try to scoop her over into the other enclosure, dump her in. I don't want to do that. I think I can work with just about any snake with a hook. So uh, let's see if we can't do that tonight. Ooh, already getting punchy. Oh, yeah, she's, she's fat. Ah, she's gone. She's gone. Um, we have a runner. We have a track star. And the first strike. Second strike. Third strike. Fourth, kinda, I guess, strike? Oh man, she is she is poised. She's a little, little cranky. Um, this is a full-grown death adder. They don't get too much bigger than this. I do believe these are, what, like the ninth most venomous snake in the world? Goes to show anything can happen with snakes. They are more agile than you would ever believe. And it would be so easy to see a snake like that that is so stocky and to not imagine it being fast. For example, the Gaboon Vipers were always told about how they move like caterpillars but they can move across surfaces fast. They can whip themselves around and they can get where they want to go quickly. So never ever underestimate 
any snake basically. Next up we've got a clip from Grayson Walker, Walker Snake Wrangler on socials, who has asked me to review one of his clips removing a rattlesnake, which is very flattering. There he is. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I know. I know. Nice. Well, well. He's biting. <laughs> that is a red diamond. <laughs> That's a beautiful one. I'm so sorry for scaring you, my friend. He had a, a meal too, it looks like, recently. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful snake. He's actually not too small. Right now we've been okay. the time of the season because of the, the unusual weather this year, because of how hot it's been it's shifted the breeding season a little bit back for okay. rattlesnakes. So we're actually getting a lot of babies right now. We saw, I went on there, the trails about this big and it wasn't this kind of rattlesnake, it was a lighter color yeah. one, mm -hmm. light yep. brown one. Here's what I noticed looking at that, Grayson, just quickly glimpsing over. You're using a bucket with holes in the lid, a nice secure bucket. You're using tongs to grab the snake because it's irate and it's thrashing around. So you're thinking about safety, yours and the snakes, you're keeping a distance. The dog's locked inside and you've even put something in the bottom of the bucket so it feels like it's got some substrate. That is all pretty cool if you ask me. And everyone else to think this guy's only got just shy of a thousand subscribers, I think more of us should probably be getting over there and taking a look at his channel. They saw a king cobra eating a Bengal monitor in Rajaji National Park or wildlife area. I can't remember what the correct name is, but that's in like the northwest edge of the king cobra's territory. That is an area where they actually modify their behavior during the winter to deal with cooler temperatures, which is interesting on in of itself. But also, I always, I don't know why, I had this assumption that monitor lizards had some kind of decent immunity to snake venom. I've really no idea where I got that belief from, uh, but clearly they don't have much immunity to king cobra venom. It was already sluggish. I think it might have already been bitten once before we saw that. I'm not sure though. Next up, we've got a video that quite a few people have requested from me, and <laughs> it's, just, it's just weird all around. Good morning, I'm with Rattlesnake Rick. Hi, my name is Rick, and some people call me Rattlesnake Rick. And uh, I live here in the desert and commune with nature. And I've made really good friends with about a dozen rattlesnakes. And uh, I'd love to show you today some of my friends. First up, before we get too far in, I've got to say, awesome job having someone signing for accessibility as well. I would love to be able to do that with my videos, but quite frankly, right now I can't afford it. Also, it's important to remember that I only just learned recently that American spoken English and American sign language, for example, aren't interchangeable. They're two different languages. Wow, it's right there. I didn't even see it. He's literally picking the rattlesnake up. one's totally nice. So beautiful. Been my friend for years. What's its name? This one I call Charlie or Frank Black. Yeah, this guy's just out in the desert making friends with rattlesnakes, gently picking them up. They are incredibly tame. I don't really know how he's achieved this. Maybe there's more on the channel. Instead of attacking venomous snakes, Ceci will hang out with them and it's obvious that she even has compassion for one of the most despised animals in the world. Rick knows that she likes to sniff them so he lets her do so safely. Rattlesnakes can bite in defense, but since Ceci is being respectful, they saw no reason to bite. She even knows to give the rattlesnakes some space when needed. You can train dogs to respect rattlesnakes and to keep their distance, but even so, having a dog around a rattlesnake so much of the time, and several rattlesnakes in fact, it just makes me nervous. I don't like the idea of it. There you go Charlie, they're comfy. This one I know so well, I don't even need the hook to pick him up. I just reach down and pick him up with my hand. I know he knows me and I can feel right when I touch him if they're tense or if they're relaxed or, or anything. So we've established a nice communication and relationship. Honestly, I'm on the fence with this one. They, this person is taking some insane risks. Do we really need to take risks like that? I don't think you do, but on the other hand, he's a nice guy. 
you know, he's he's tamed these snakes, he obviously loves the snakes, but for me, it's just not my cup of tea. You know it's not a real, genuine scene, you know it's been set up, and therefore, you know, it's cruel to both animals. People shouldn't be doing this for attention. I'm trying not to be nervous, but boy, he looks like Popeye looking at you. got that. <laughs> <laughs> I am Squatsk, I am sk <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm going to bite you just I'm going to bite you anyway, because that's what snakes do. His wife was bitten by a rattlesnake that was by the barbecue pit. I, I remember, I heard about oh, that. Sure. She was walked up to the barbecue pit and the rattlesnake was underneath. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. But it was really lucky by it. No, hardly. They saw Wrangler Bruce trying to free a rattlesnake from a glue trap. Glue traps are incredibly cruel and quite useless as well. You know, they're just a stupid idea all round. If you want to kill mice, use a mouse trap or a rat trap. Use a humane trap if you want to and release something later. But glue traps, where you get this animal in limbo where it suffers for hours or days before you find it, before dying, that really doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to anyone. But I don't know why you'd use them. This snake can make you bleed from every hole in your body. Meet the saw-scaled viper. Don't let its size fool you. This snake is only about one to three feet long, but it's responsible for more human deaths than almost any other snake. Its venom is packed with toxins that cause massive internal bleeding, organ failure, and if untreated, death. But here's the scary part. It's found all over Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Living close to villages and farmland, which means encounters with people are common. The name saw scaled comes from the sound it makes, rubbing its scales together to produce a chilling hiss before it strikes. And unlike most snakes, this one doesn't back off easily. It's aggressive, fast, and strikes repeatedly. So next time you think the most dangerous snake is the cobra, remember it might actually be this small angry killer. Well, this is obviously one of those clips where I'm going to ask you how many errors were in there. <laughs> and sometimes people say, why would you not tell us how many errors? Well, I'm making more fun for you. This is a clip, of course, from Survivor, where a guy got bit by a sea crate, which is an extremely venomous snake. And personally, if I didn't know what the snake was, I wouldn't even wait that long. I wouldn't even look in a book. I'll just call for help straight away. So this man left his pregnant wife to give birth alone so he could go on a reality show and then he ends up getting bitten by a poisonous snake that is known to rarely bite. This survivor snake bite debacle has me locked in after falling off the show a long time ago. This castaway named Jake tells a few of his other tribe members that his wife is very pregnant and is days away from giving birth but they agreed that it was better that he could go on the show for a chance to win a million dollars. So, red flag. Nipple piercing as well, red flag. He also said something about being good at manipulating women, like, ew. So come day three, he's chilling on the beach, and then randomly, so he says, a snake comes up to him and latches onto his foot, and he's like not even sure if it bit him at first, but they do realize there are two puncture marks on the bottom of his foot, and the snake bit him. And there's some conspiracies around this, which I'm going to get to in a second. Long story short, the snake didn't send out any venom with the bite, so he was perfectly fine, but they were worried about him, so the doctors said that they weren't comfortable with him going back on the show. That's such a weird story, I've never known him to act like that. I just wonder what he was doing. Did he step on it, not seeing? I'm, I'm just not sure. It's a weird one all around, and the conspiracy theories, I don't know what they are. I will look into that more, but hopefully in the comments some of you will fill me in as well. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching, I hope you'll be back next week.